Now I like to use these a lot, these metal lures or jigs rigged with the assist hook. Main from the kayak when I'm vertically fishing, vertically lure fishing, but occasionally from the shore. Maybe when I'm fishing in a surf, in a, on a surf beach after bass. And they'll catch a variety of species. They'll catch mackerel if you're just using a, sing, a single jig instead of a string of feathers for mackerel. They'll, they'll catch them and occasionally pick out the better size mackerel. I've had pollock on them. I've had cod. They're very good for cod. I've caught uh, gurnard when I'm fishing with the smaller ones over the clean ground, over the sand. Got lucky a few times and caught some John Dory and occasionally picked up bass. Not that often because when I'm using these on the kayak, I'm usually using them in, in say, anything from, say, 40 feet of water up to 100 feet where I don't tend to get the bass, tend to get the bass in the shallows. But occasionally, occasionally I'll, I'll pick up a bass. Now, the reason that I like to use them is because of their design, they're also known as speed jigs, they cut through the water, cut through the tide very, very quickly and get down much, much quicker than, say, a soft plastic. So if you're drifting along and you come across a, a shoal, of, shoal of fish on the fish finder, these will, will get down, down to those fish very quickly. The other reason, say I'm drifting in, uh, in a strong tide uh, in, in a fairly deep water and I'm using soft plastic, weedless soft plastics over a reef. And it's just taking, it's just taking too long, to, taking ages, ages to get down. Pop one of these on and then whoosh, that will get down much quicker and it'll be able to, you can uh, maintain a vertical, vertical ang angle better. So that's one reason. Uh, the other reason I like to use them, the other occasion I like to use them, and you've seen me, you would have seen me use this setup many, many times on the kayak whenever I'm using a string of feathers or a string of sabikis, is that instead of using the lead weight on your, on your end of your feathers, pop one of these on, one of these jigs with the assist hooks. Reason being that a lead weight is going to catch you absolutely nothing, but one of these will. And I've had some real bonus catches. They will, of course, catch the mackerel when you're using them. And all of, the, all of those other species I mentioned, I've caught when I'm just actually going, out, going fishing for mackerel or, mackerel or herring. So I advocate this, as long as, as, long as you, you, you've got a jig that, uh, that weighs enough to get you down there, uh, rather than having to use a lead weight, why, why use a lead weight? when a lead weight is not going to catch you anything. So yeah, if you never tried that on the end of your feathers and you've got one that will get you down there, put one of these on instead of using the lead weight. You'll be surprised at what it will catch. All right, so that's the other reason. Now, for those of you that don't know why you would want to use an assist hook instead of the normal setup, with the hook down at the end of the jig when you're vertically fishing is a couple of reasons but the main reason is because of the design let's say for example a cod comes along when you're jigging takes hold of that that uh, jig and gets hooked when you're playing it because of the design you play it like that so this is your leader coming down from your rod tip to your clip where you've got the, the jig clipped on and it goes straight through to the hook. You're playing it straight from your leader, straight through to the fish. So there's less chance of the fish being able to use the weight of the jig to become unhooked. There's less chance of the weight pulling the hook out because you're playing it straight through. That's the main, that's the main reason. Whereas, let's say if you've got the normal setup, and you've got the, the fish hooked in its mouth like that, and this is hanging out of its mouth and it's pulling. It's pulling, pulling against, against the hook the fish and it can pull the hook out. Another reason, not so much, but it, it, but it is, is a reason, is let's say you're fishing over rough ground vertically. You're lowering this down to the rough ground, down like that. The first thing to touch that rough ground is the end of the jig, which hasn't got a hook on. 
you, if you're using braid, you can feel it hit the, the, uh, the bottom, the rough ground straight away, and then you can start working it above it. So there's less chance of getting snagged. You can still get snagged, of course, but there's less chance of getting snagged. Whereas if you lower that vertically down into rough ground, the first thing that's going to hit that rough ground, that weed or that rock, is the hook. And there's much more chance, of course, with the hook going straight into the rough ground, of being snagged. So that's the other reason. OK, now you can buy these. Of course, we know you can buy these, these speed jigs, these jigs ready rigged with the assist hooks easily. Or you can buy a packet of these assist hooks to go and connect, connect to your jigs. But I like to make them myself. The reason I like to make them myself is because it gives me more scope. I can, I, if I can make them, I've got all of these different jigs. I can make them to, um, I can fit the assist hooks to, the, with the assist hooks to jigs that let's say metal lures that normally come rigged like that. I can say, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna use that on the kayak vertical. I'm gonna put, a, put an assist hook on it instead. So it enables me to enables me to to do that. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how I make make them. Now I know there's loads of videos out on the internet of how to make uh, assist hooks. We know that, but I'm going to show you show you the way that I do it. What you're going to need to make the assist hooks is first some cord. Now you can buy cord that is sold as assist cord. But what I use is this, this is spear fishing line that the spear fishermen use. And it's a lot cheaper than that line sold as assist cord. This only cost me 70p per meter with low postage cost. And it's 100, 100 kilo breaking strain, so more than enough. And it's only 1.6 diameter. It's quite important not to have too thick a cord because it makes it difficult to make the assist hooks and makes too big a knot. So yeah, spear fishing line. And what I'll do is, if I can find the links, I'll put links in the description of where you can get some of these bits and bits and pieces if I can find the links. Next is a solid O-ring, which are for making assist hooks. Now it is better, in my opinion, if you do use a solid O-ring, but you can, if you don't want to you can tie the cord straight to a split ring but better in my opinion to have the cord tied to the solid o-ring and then clip the o-ring onto the split ring next some shrink tubing which go which adds in my opinion is an added attraction the color of the shrink tubing which goes over the knot and is shrunk over the knot of the uh, of the cord and in this case it's five mil diameter i use you gotta have the right the, the diameter is not, if the diameter is too small you're not going to get it over the knot that we're going that you'll see later and if it's too big it's not going to shrink down enough over the cord so in my case it, it's i found that five mil diameter works well next you're going to need a split ring but you don't have to buy those. You, you, normally these, these uh, metal lures, they come with a split ring, like that one down at the end. So all you do is take the hook off, transfer that split ring from the bottom of the jig to the top of the jig, like that. And that's for clipping the, clipping the assist hook on. Next, your hook of a suitable size. Now the hooks I like to use are the inline single hooks that you use for replacing trebles on lures things like plugs with single hooks and the reason i like to use them is because they come with a big eye which makes it much much easier to get the cord through and the ones i use are these mustard kaiju or kaiju they're called various various different sizes now when it comes to the size it's quite important, I've found, to get the right size. The size, you, you, the, the finished assist hook will sit roughly about halfway down the jig or maybe slightly ab above, above halfway. So where it sits, it's important that it either can go over the jig easy, the gape of the hook is, is wide enough that it goes over the jig easy, 
or it doesn't go over like this. And the reason for that is if you've got it where it can just go over, but it, but it, but it can get caught, it can get caught around the, uh, over, over the jig, that's no good. So I tend to go either much bigger so it can go over and, uh, and not get snagged or slightly smaller like this one so it can't go over over the jig and, and get uh, and get caught up. Then you want a box of matches or a lighter to shrink your tube in and then something scissors or whatever to cut to cut your cord with. Now to make the assist hook. So what I've done, I've cut a piece of cord. I've given myself a, a generous amount so it makes it easier to, to work with and tie the knots. Now this cord comes with an inner cord like that, which you don't need. So if you've got a cord that comes with this, this, this stuff, this inner cord, all you've got to do is pull it out and it comes out very, very easy. We don't need that. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is fold this in half. So it forms a loop. And then next, just do a basic simple overhand knot without tightening it up. Now what I've, I've got to do is try and judge how that's going to sit, where it's going to sit, where it's going to hang on the jig. And what I, what I, when this knot has tightened right up. What I'm looking for is to try and get the hook hanging around about halfway or if anything above halfway. It doesn't matter if it goes a little bit below halfway but what I mean by is that I don't want it hanging right the way down here towards the bottom of the jig. So I'm just trying to judge where it's going to where it's going to sit. But to be a little bit shorter than 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 longer. All right, so before I tighten that up we're going to take the take the hook and put the eye of the hook through the knot so the knot is over the shank like that so come, come up from underneath and you'll see why in a minute and then tighten the knot over the shank and I'm just hoping hopefully that, that, that should be about right. So we tighten that up. And then next, this loop is going to go through the eye of the hook. And this is why it's good to have a hook that's got a big, a big eye. If you've got a small eye, then it becomes difficult to do that. So I'm going to push that loop through that eye. Just pinch it down and it should go through. Okay, there we go. Like that. And then with that root nice and tight around the shank, that then pulls up to the base of the eye. Check that again. Yeah, by the time, by the time that's by the time that's that's tied onto the uh, O ring, that should that should sit about half, about halfway. Okay, so good. So now what I can do is, is just trim those tag ends down, leaving a bit. So we want to trim it about about there and what I'm going to do is next I'm going to burn these tag ends just to stop the fraying just singe those just a little bit to stop the fraying. Okay, so far so good. All right, what we're going to do now, I'm going to cut a piece of shrink tube in and I want it to go over the 
over the chord there just beyond the chord and come up just above just above the eye about there so we're talking probably a bit of about oh, i don't know rough roughly 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 an inch that should be about right and then that goes over the chord and this is this is where it's important to have shrink tubing that's big enough take that little bit there off that's big enough to go over the knot but not not too big that you that you can't shrink it down So now I'm going to shrink that tubing down, hopefully without burning myself. There we go, that's shrinking nicely. A squeeze and a squeeze there and there we go that shrunk lovely now over the cord over the knot next one I've got to do is loop the the solid o-ring on or if you're not if you're not bothering with the, the solid o-ring pop, pop it on a split ring so it goes up through the o-ring and then the cord has got to come back over the top um, and I must admit this is a little bit awkward but it does you can do it like like that and I'm just going to pull just gonna pull that all tight there we go one assist hook now, now all I've got to do is clip that the the solid O ring onto the onto the split ring. There you go. So I've put the solid O ring and just slid it onto the split ring, and you can see there how that sits about halfway. But it's going to sit higher than that, and I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you why. I just got it just got to get a clip okay so what happens you can see where it's sitting now roughly halfway but what happens when you clip this on so you've got a clip on the end of your leader what you don't do you don't clip it on the o-ring you clip it onto the split ring so that, so your your clip on the end of your leader goes onto the split ring so when you're you're fishing like that that actually pulls the can you see how that pulls that up a little bit higher so we're now we're nicely just above the halfway just above the halfway mark on the jig so there you go if you've got a few jigs and you want to put some assist hooks on them and you've never made them yourself before and you're looking for something to do to keep you occupied during these difficult lockdown times go and play with your tackle make a few of these jigs and have and have a bit of fun at the same time as i said i'll try and put the the links if i can find all the links i might not be able to find all of them if i can find all the links i'll put the the links to where you can get these bits and pieces in the description so once again I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching. <laughs>